Hi everyone, um, this is a short video on the kidneys and osmoregulation by Alina and Lorian. So first off, what is osmoregulation? Well, we're going to teach you all a little bit about what it is and the structure and function of the different parts of the kidney. And how we'll also teach you some interesting things about osmoregulation in fish and marine animals. And some interesting kidney facts. So first off, what is osmoregulation? It's the body's response mechanisms um, and their attempt to maintain homostatic levels of water. Uh, particularly, we're going to be looking at that in humans. Um, but in general, it's the process of regulating water, of water potential, in order to keep fluid and electrolyte balance within a cell or organism in relation to their surroundings. So, and we got that from biodictionary.com. Um, in humans, one of the places where osmoregulation is key is in the kidney. So this is the kidney. Um, um, the kidney's main function is to filter waste products from the blood. <laughs> um, the bloodstream is constantly removing waste products from our body tissue. Uh, things like urea, a waste product from me uh, the metabolism of amino acids, and proteins. Uh, so now we'll look more closely into the structure of the kidney. Here's the structure. Um, so if you look here, uh, we have the renal artery, right here, um, which is a major blood vessel that takes blood into the kidney. Uh, it then branches into a network of, of many, many blood vessels. Um, remember, because the kidney filters blood, it's highly vascular. Uh, both kidneys are highly vascular. We also have the renal vein, which drains the filtered blood away from the kidney. Also here. Um, then the renal pelvis is also in this area, um, and it collects urine, uh, the fluid product produced by the kidneys, and it consists of water and dissolved waste products. Uh, urine then drains from the renal pelvis to the ureter, which takes it to the bladder. Uh, the tissue that surrounds the renal pelvis is called the renal medulla, which is covered by the renal cortex. So now we're going to present a little bit about different animals and how they use homeostasis stasis and osmoregulation. Um, in marine fish, here we have a marine fish and the different transfer of ions and water that occurs. Uh, specialized cells in their gills excrete excess salt. So there's, um, they actively secrete it, it's through active transport. Uh, there's also a diffusion through their gills of both of water and of ions and a diffusion through their skin of the ions. Um, a way to get rid of this is again the active secretion and also a uh, concentrated urine, so urine high in salt. Here we have a freshwater fish. Um, here in the freshwater fish, um, there is an absorption of fresh water from the environment due to osmosis. So fresh fish, unlike marine fish, do not drink any water. Um, salt observing cells and their gills also use active transport and um, of the different salt ions. So here you can see. And so the water diffuses in through the skin and the ions diffuse out. Also, here we have a marine bird. <laughs> um, so birds that live near the sea consume a large amount of salt in their diet. Uh, their nasal salt glands then remove the excess salt from their body uh, through a concentrated salt solution. So this is how they re regain the levels of, um, of salt in their body and of water. So again, it's this idea of homeostasis in all living things, which is key to understanding osmoregulation. We also have some fun facts about the kidney. Did you know that kidneys filter about 180 liters of blood every day? Um, also, did you know that March 10th, 2000, um, this year, 2012, will be World Kidney Day. And the body's total supply of blood passes through, ki through the kidneys about 12 times every hour. So your entire supply of blood, every hour, 12 times. And each of your kidneys is about the size of a mobile phone. Um, 
For references, we used biologyonline.org slash dictionary slash osmoregulation, uh, faculty, clinotech, sunny.edu, and kidneyfacts.com. Thank you.